Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Zhendowski with Western Washington Medical Group. I received my medical degree from the University of Washington and Stanford University and have been treating people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD for the past decade. I am pleased to provide you with this educational tool that can help you learn more about COPD and some treatment options. It's important that you play an active role in the treatment of your COPD and this program is designed to help you. As you watch the following chapters, you'll learn about the effects of COPD and some ways that may help control, maintain, or improve symptoms caused by this disease. Living with COPD can be challenging, and remembering the information we discuss at your office visits can be difficult. That is why this program was created. You can now learn about COPD in the comfort of your own home and at your own pace. If there is any information you need repeated, feel free to watch the program as many times as you wish. Although this program is designed to provide you with the information you need to understand COPD and some treatment options, you may still have questions. If that is the case, bring your questions to your next office visit or call the office. You can also share this program with your family and friends so they can learn about COPD and help support you. I have volunteered my time to help record this program and have not been compensated for my participation. I strongly believe that my patients and their families will find this DVD to be a valuable resource. So let's begin by learning about COPD and its effects. My first goal in this program is to help you learn about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and how it might affect you. The more knowledge you have, the more prepared you will be to work with me in managing your disease. COPD is a common but serious lung disease that gets worse over time. As of September 2013, more than 12 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with COPD, but the total number of people affected, including those undiagnosed and likely to have the disease, is estimated at 24 million. The term COPD actually covers two main conditions, chronic bronchitis and emphysema which limits airflow and cause breathing difficulties. A person with COPD may have chronic bronchitis or emphysema or both. Understanding how the lungs function is helpful in understanding COPD and how it affects you. When you inhale, the air travels down your trachea or windpipe into the tubes in your lungs, called bronchial tubes or airways. These tubes branch out like a tree inside of your lungs into thousands of smaller tubes called bronchioles. At the end of each tube are small round air sacs called alveoli. In healthy lungs, the airways and alveoli are elastic and stretchy. This elasticity helps the lungs keep its normal shape and move the air in and out effectively. When you breathe in, each alveolus fills up with air like a small balloon and oxygen travels from the alveoli to your blood to be used in your body. Normally, when you breathe out, the alveoli deflate and carbon dioxide is cleared out of your body. As we discussed previously, emphysema is one of the main lung diseases included in the diagnosis of COPD. Emphysema is seen when the walls between many of the alveoli in the lungs become damaged and floppy, and they no longer contract back to their original shape. These damaged alveoli can prevent the passage of oxygen from the lungs into the blood. The walls of some of the alveoli can also be destroyed, leading to fewer and larger alveoli, decreasing the total amount of air moving in and out of the lungs. Because some air cannot move out, it may stay trapped in the lungs, keeping you from exhaling fully. As we discussed, not being able to breathe out fully keeps carbon dioxide in the lungs instead of clearing it out. As a result, patients with CPD can have high levels of CO2 trapped in their lungs compared with healthy adults. With chronic bronchitis, the other main lung condition included in COPD, the lining of the airways or bronchioles is continuously inflamed and irritated. The term bronchitis means inflammation of the airways, including the bronchioles. That inflammation causes production of large amounts of thick sputum or mucus, which clogs your airways, making it harder for you to breathe. COPD usually starts because of long-term exposure to lung irritants such as smoking or secondhand smoke, certain chemical fumes, dust, or air pollution. This type of irritation causes a chronic inflammation and production of thick mucus within the tubes that bring air to your lungs. 
This results in a narrowing of the space inside the airways, making it harder for you to breathe in and out. Your chest may feel tight, you might have a chronic cough with or without mucus production, or you may start wheezing. You may also start to feel shortness of breath when performing your regular daily activities. The inflammation also prevents your lungs from getting rid of new irritants, so you may start coughing more often and may cough up mucus as well. COPD symptoms can vary in severity and typically worsen as the disease progresses. You may or may not be experiencing some of the symptoms I described earlier. The severity of your symptoms will depend on how much lung damage you have. Mild COPD symptoms such as shortness of breath may be handled with simple lifestyle changes such as taking the elevator instead of the stairs. However, COPD that is more severe or has progressed can cause symptoms such as swelling in your ankles, feet or legs and weight loss. Some severe symptoms such as having a hard time catching your breath, blue or gray lips or fingernails, a fast heart rate or a noticeable lack of mental alertness may require treatment in a hospital. We'll continue to assess how your treatment is working to elevate your symptoms and determine if it needs to change over time. Although the damage to your lungs from COPD cannot be reversed, available treatments and lifestyle changes may help improve some of your symptoms and minimize further damage. In the next chapter, we'll discuss how COPD is diagnosed and treatment options. COPD is diagnosed upon a variety of factors and assessments. I will assess your symptoms, your medical and family history, and review your exposure to lung irritants. I may have recommended some tests to help diagnose COPD and exclude other medical conditions that could be causing your symptoms. Once we excluded these other possible conditions, COPD was diagnosed with breathing tests of your lung function. Lung function tests measure how much air you can breathe in and out, how fast you can expel the air, and how well your lungs deliver oxygen to your blood. The main diagnostic test for COPD is called spirometry. This is the breathing test that measures how much air you can blow out and how fast you can blow it out. The results help me diagnose COPD and determine its severity or if another condition may be causing your symptoms. I may measure the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood to determine whether you need oxygen therapy because your oxygen levels are low. This is done through a blood test. People with COPD typically show lower levels of oxygen and high levels of carbon dioxide. This is because people with COPD have difficulty getting oxygen in and expelling the carbon dioxide from their lungs. The results from this blood test can help in evaluating the severity of your COPD. I may also request a chest x-ray or a CT scan of your chest. These tests create a picture of the structure inside of your chest and can tell us if your heart, lungs, or blood vessels show signs of COPD. These pictures are also useful in determining if your symptoms may be caused by another condition. When you've been diagnosed with COPD, it's important that we work together to help prevent further complications and to help slow the progression of your disease. If you smoke, the first and most important step you can take is to quit smoking. Smoking is the leading cause of COPD in the United States. Most of the damage to your lungs is caused by the continuous cycle in inflammation brought on by smoking. The health benefits from quitting smoking are immediate and long-lasting. Eight hours after quitting, the carbon monoxide levels in your blood drops and the oxygen level in your blood increases. Just 48 hours later, nerve endings start to regrow and a sense of smell and taste begin to return. Circulation, coughing, and shortness of breath all improve within the first smoking-free year. Ten years after quitting, the risk of developing lung cancer is about half of the risk of a person who still smokes one pack a day. Quitting now can help you be healthier overall and help you meet the challenges of COPD. I will work with you to find the best smoking cessation plan and support for your situation. Take as many steps to stay healthy and active as you can. In an upcoming chapter, you will hear from a patient with COPD about the importance of exercise and diet to help reduce symptoms. However, it's important to consult with me before you start an exercise plan. 
Although there is no cure for COPD, there are treatment options that can help manage the disease. Through a combination of medication and self-care techniques, we can work together to help make a difference in your breathing and keep your disease from progressing. I may recommend one or more of the following non-medical COPD treatment options. Pulmonary rehabilitation is a structured program that can reduce symptoms of COPD. Depending on your needs, a pulmonary rehabilitation program might include exercise training, nutrition counseling, and education on special breathing techniques and other means of coping with COPD. We can discuss if this program is right for you. Regular exercise can increase your energy levels, improve your circulation, reduce symptoms, and increase your endurance. We can work together to determine how much physical activity and what kind of activity are best for you. These might be stretching exercises, and aerobic exercise like walking, or other exercise at strengthening your muscles. Oxygen therapy is another treatment option for people whose COPD is very severe. Oxygen therapy may improve exercise endurance. Surgery may be another option for some people with very severe COPD. In addition to these non-medical treatments, I may recommend one or more medications that may help make your breathing easier. Two primary medications frequently used to treat COPD are bronchodilators and inhaled corticosteroids. Bronchodilators work by relaxing the muscles around your airways. This allows more air in and out of the lungs and improves breathing. Short-acting bronchodilators are usually only used for sudden COPD symptoms. Long-acting bronchodilators are prescribed for everyday use. Depending on the severity of your COPD, I may prescribe both a short-acting and long-acting bronchodilator. These medications are taken using an inhaler, which allows the medication to go directly to your lungs. Some side effects from short and long-acting bronchodilators may include a nervous or shaky feeling, overexcitement or hyperreactivity, and increased heart rate. If a patient has severe COPD symptoms, I may prescribe an inhaled corticosteroid with a long-acting bronchodilator. When used correctly, inhaled steroids are breathed into the lungs and may help to reduce the inflammation or swelling that is an underlying cause of COPD symptoms that can make it difficult to breathe. We may test inhaled steroids use with a bronchodilator for about six weeks to three months to see if it helps you breathe better. You should note that there are different types of steroids with some important differences between them. Inhaled corticosteroids are breathed into the lungs and reduce inflammation in the airways. Side effects from inhaled corticosteroids may include bruising, oral infections, and hoarseness. The pill forms, like prednisone, are taken orally and reduce inflammation throughout the entire body. Oral steroids can have serious side effects such as weight gain, diabetes, osteoporosis, cataracts, and increased risk of infection. Colds, the flu, and other respiratory infections can cause problems for people with COPD, so it's important that you do your best to avoid them. Because flu shots can reduce your risk of getting the flu, a pneumococcal vaccine can lower your risk for pneumococcal pneumonia and its complications, I may recommend that you get vaccinated. Hi, I'm Sharon, and I was diagnosed with COPD several years ago. As you heard earlier in the program, COPD is a lung disease that makes it hard to breathe. You and I are among the estimated 12 million Americans diagnosed with COPD. An additional 12 million Americans are likely to have the disease but don't know it. In 2004, approximately 64 million people worldwide were living with COPD. Having an early diagnosis is important. Getting treatment may enable you to feel better. You and I have been diagnosed and are learning how to manage and treat our COPD. Living with this disease can be challenging and may cause a variety of emotions. You may feel overwhelmed by the amount of information you're learning, but you're not alone. By empowering yourself with knowledge and working with your healthcare team, you may feel better prepared to manage your COPD. Building and maintaining a strong and open relationship with your healthcare team may also help you feel confident and knowledgeable about your treatment plan, 
feel more comfortable talking about your COPD and its symptoms and address symptoms or side effects sooner rather than later. Make sure you provide your doctor with accurate information about any symptoms or side effects you experience, including severity or changes, and ask any questions that come up concerning your COPD and the management of your health. There are a number of steps you can take to help manage your COPD. The first step is to learn about all aspects of your treatment plan. Before each visit to your doctor, you might want to prepare a list of questions to ask. And then, during your visit, write down the answers he or she tells you. You might find it helpful to bring a trusted friend or family member along to provide support during your visit with your doctor. There are also some steps you can take to improve your general health between doctor's visits. Smoking is the leading cause of COPD. If you smoke, the most important thing you can do to slow the progression of your COPD is to stop smoking. Talk to your doctor about a program or product that can help you quit. Do your best to avoid lung irritants such as secondhand smoke, air pollution, chemical fumes, and dust. Stay indoors and close your windows on days when air pollution is predicted to be bad in your area. Try to get enough rest so you stay healthy. Do activities slowly and keep items you need on a daily basis within reach. Be comfortable. Wear clothes that are loose and easy to put on and take off. Exercise and a healthy diet are important for overall health and sense of well-being. And it's particularly important for people with COPD. Regular exercise can raise your energy level and reduce your COPD symptoms. You may experience the following benefits from exercise. Improvement in shortness of breath, feeling less tired, sleeping more soundly, and improvement in your mood. It's important that you discuss an exercise plan with your doctor before you begin. You may need to adjust your exercise depending on your symptoms. Good nutrition is important for everyone, including people with COPD. Being overweight or underweight can cause problems. Your doctor can help you create a nutrition plan that is right for you. Eating a balanced diet that includes foods from all the basic food groups can help you feel better. Because you can be at a higher risk for lung infections, eating healthy can help strengthen your immune system and help protect you from infections. To help maintain your energy, you may consider eating your larger meals earlier in the day. If you become breathless while eating, try eating several smaller meals throughout the day rather than three large ones. Try easy recipes or ask family and friends for help preparing meals. We all know that too much stress doesn't make anyone feel good and that having a chronic illness can create stressful situations. You might try joining a support group to discuss the aspects of COPD that are bothering you with other people sharing similar experiences. And don't forget family and friends. Discuss your concerns and feelings with people you trust. There is also a section called Helpful Web Resources included in this DVD program. Here you will find a listing of websites that will provide you with more information on living with and treatment options for COPD. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this information helpful. Although COPD cannot be cured, available treatments and lifestyle changes may minimize further damage to your lungs and help improve your symptoms. I know living with COPD can be difficult, and I'm happy I could provide you with this information. Thank you for watching this program. If there's anything you would like to see again, you can simply visit the main menu and replay any chapter. If the program has raised any questions for you, please write them down and bring them to your next appointment. You may also want to share this program with your family and friends so they can learn about COPD and help support you during your treatment. Remember, you're not alone. An estimated 12 million Americans are diagnosed with COPD and an additional 12 million Americans are likely to have the disease but don't even know it. There are many websites and groups dedicated to supporting and educating people with this disease. You may want to take a moment to check out the helpful web resources section of this DVD program. 
Here you will find a listing of websites that will provide you with additional information about living with and treating COPD. I encourage you to share your feelings and questions honestly with me and my staff. Communication is an important part of our relationship. It will help me to better manage your symptoms, your treatment, and your overall well-being. COPD is a treatable disease, and we can work together to slow its progression and manage your symptoms. COPD is an ongoing challenge, but I assure you, it's a challenge we will face together.